Hey guys, Cryptolis Geek here and welcome back to the channel. A lot of you have asked my opinions about a new smart telescope that is entering the market from the uh, very well-known brand uh, Celestron. And uh, yeah, I had no idea that this was coming, so I've had a look at the specs and boy, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. There's some really good things about this new smart telescope uh, coming up and there's some like really weird things about it as well. Uh, so let's have a look. So I am here on the Celestron webpage for this smart telescope, the Celestron Origin, uh, the Intelligent Home Observatory. And um, yeah, so smartphone controlled, auto alignment, uh, auto stacking of uh, images so you get like beautiful images of the night sky with just a simple click all for the low low price of four thousand us dollars <laughs> yeah so it's uh it's an expensive smart scope let's say that something like the zw c star s50 or the dwarf lab dwarf 2 they're kind of uh they can be an impulse buy for a lot of middle class people um, this one, it's a bit less of an impulse buy. Um, and so my first reaction upon seeing it was uh, looking at the price tag and being like, what the fudge and fury? Uh, so yeah, uh, but then I looked into the details and to see what would justify this price. And so we can see from the image here that we have a very interesting optical tube here. And it so happens that this is a Raza 6 optical tube, which does not exist standalone at this stage. And that's got me super excited because if you're long time watchers of the channel, you know that one of my favorite telescopes has been the Celestron C6 together with the Hyperstar module for it. And uh, yeah, the Rasa 6 is basically the same thing, but fully integrated and in theory better, uh, except that this is only for this smart telescope as far as I can tell. But still, it's got me super excited because Celestron went through the hassle of making a Raza 6 optical tube. It added electronics inside the tube and stuff like that. But doesn't that mean that now that they've done the hard work, it makes sense for them to release the optical tube as an OTA that we can buy. That would be amazing and that's got me super excited. So there you can see the roller coaster is, is, is started because I get really super excited already. Now this telescope will be on top of the Celestron Evolution mount, which is an out as one arm go-to mount and it will be paired with the StarSense technology, so which is basically plate solving uh, to, to let the mount automatically align itself and find, find its way across the sky. So you can just like open up the smartphone app, say, hey, I want to image uh, M42, uh, one click or one tap and then it will go to M M42, point itself, start taking images and you'll get a good result. Uh, so that's also a valuable, valuable mount. I've heard a lot of good things about the Celestron Evolution, even though I haven't uh, owned it. I've owned similar mounts like the uh, the mount that was underpinning the Mead LT6 and LS6 or LT8 and LS8 telescopes uh, long a dec over a decade ago. And those mounts were excellent. And another thing that I noticed looking at this image and also from the promotion videos is that this OTA, the tube itself and the mount can be disconnected from one another. You can remove the tube from the mount so you can reuse the mount for something else as far as I can tell. And maybe in the future, you'll be able to reuse the tube for something else. So that's also a really good point. Uh, it also means that uh, maybe in the future, they will have like a newer modules that you can install in the mount and still do the same thing. So there's a bit of uh, less planned obsolescence than maybe with other smart telescopes, which is a good thing. Uh, but then I look at some weird stuff like uh, and this is this point here is something that Celestron mentions a lot. Also, I, th I, I counted three times, maybe four times in their intro video for the telescope, which is the AI powered astrophotography. Now I know AI is a super nice, cool uh, buzzword. But I would tell Celestron they might not want to uh, put AI as part of their marketing because now, now they say like AI, AI algorithms automatically stack and process every frame in real time. So to stack and process every frame in real time, you do not need any AI algorithm. So now it makes me wonder what the heck are you talking about? 
uh, me, many people, whenever I made a video about like the Dwarf 2 or the Sea Star Smart Telescope, a lot of comments were about like, oh, it's just downloading images from the cloud. It's not really taking pictures or it's just using AI to, to create the image just like the, the that uh, Samsung phone did for the moon. So it's not really like, uh, it's not trustworthy and not, not, tr not worth the price. And to... <laughs> In spite of that, seeing Celestron put this AI kind of front and center, uh, I'm kind of a bit uh, worried about that. And when I look at the images, uh, I, I, I could have thought like, okay, maybe the integrated uh, Graxpert AI, uh, something that can remove the light pollution gradient automatically using AI, which is a good thing. Uh, or maybe they included like something like Blur Exterminator or Noise Exterminator, which are AI powered algorithms to uh, enhance the contrast and details and remove the noise from images without inventing detail. But when I look at the sample images, you can see this is a sample image of the Veil Nebula. Uh, that sample image, honestly, it doesn't look great. The, the stars are not super pinpoint in my opinion. The signal to noise ratio isn't that great. And I got a very similar image with my humble uh, and 10 times less the price. Uh, dwarf 2 smart telescope uh, and and the same can be seen with those galaxy images so I, I, I don't know where the the AI went uh, this is slightly better though but it's like the I am very underwhelmed by the sample pictures that they are providing now I was also very underwhelmed by the sample pictures provided for the dwarf 2 and to a lesser extent to the sea star but still it's something that has me like raise an eyebrow and so on this bit of a downer note, so we're back like down in the roller coaster, let's keep going down into a tunnel for the roller coaster uh, using like looking at what camera sensor they're using. So the camera sensor that is on this $4,000 smart telescope is an IMX178 sensor. So basically the same as an ASI178MC camera. This is an old sensor. It's not a bad sensor, but it's an old sensor. And in 2024, you really should be using the newer sensors like the IMX uh, 585 is an excellent sensor with pixel size that is very close to this one. And I think it would be a much better fit for a smart telescope like, a telescope like that. I'm a bit confused why they went with such an, an older sensor. And also the sensor or the camera that is on this telescope cannot be cooled as far as I can tell. So it's gonna be an uncooled camera that can take 10 second exposures in alt as on the smart telescope with uh, 300 millimeters focal length or 335 millimeters focal length with the only advantage compared to the C star that is uh, 10 times less in terms of price that it is a faster focal ratio so it collects more photons per unit of time. Okay, so that's not great, but let's let's get back up on the roller coaster a little bit because the camera itself can be changed. And that is a really good thing. So they can provide in the future more cameras to uh, put on top of that uh, telescope. Of course, it's, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to buy a ZW camera or a Tube Tech camera and just put it on top and use it as is. I don't think so. But it is a good thing for being able to upgrade that telescope in the future without having to throw everything and buy a whole new smart telescope instead. So that is a good point. And another good point is that in front of the camera, it supports a filter drawer where you can put in standard 1.25 inch or 2 inch filters. And so you can put your own filters. That's also an excellent point. It, it really means like flexibility. And this is something that the C star was not designed for, although something like the Dwarf Lab was. And looking at the other advantages, we can see things like uh, this. So all of the raw images, apparently I would assume this means the 10 seconds subframes that will then be stacked by the tel this telescope are available for processing. So you'd be able to stack it yourself and then uh, process the final image. Uh, I like that they say that uh, it's unlike other systems. I'm not sure which other systems they're uh, thinking about, but both the, the Dwarf Lab Dwarf 2 and the C-Star provide the uh, raw frames. So it's not such a differentiator for the Celestron origin. And still going on to the advantages though, we have a dew prevent prevention system, which is basically the dew ring that Celestron has made available for their other OTAs as well. It's 
directly integrated into the system. That's really good. And it also has an autofocuser directly within the OTA as well. And this is powered by apparently a Raspberry Pi based system using Celestron software. Now this is where I'm really interested to see what this software actually is. Is it effectively an ND system with a Celestron layer on top of it? If it is, I hope there could be a way to use third-party equipment, so third-party cameras, for instance, via this system, or even third-party mounts, so you can put this OTA onto a, an equatorial mount and use it as is. That would be amazing, unless Celestron uses fully proprietary software, or they're based in themselves off of the uh, open source indie uh, software stack, but like ZW, they decide to really lock it down, just like ZW did with the SI Air. So it, I'll be very interested to see what's possible there and uh, how hackable <laughs> this telescope is going to be. And still talking about the advantages, the future upgrades part on the Celestron website has got me really interested because we can see we have planned of uh, compatibility with the StarSense Auto Guider. This is a good thing because then you'll be able to do guiding on this uh, this telescope, which also means longer exposures, which also means equatorial modes. So compatibility with the HD Pro Wedge and support for polar alignment. This all means equatorial modes and long exposures supported for long exposure astrophotography. Of course, on the IMX178 sensor, it's not gonna be great unless they provide a cool astrophotography camera module with a good sensor like the IMX585 in it. So these features are really good to have, but are they enough on their own? Probably not. It, there's also another drawback to this. You can see it says like it's going to be compatible with the StarSense Auto Guider, which in terms of context also means it's not going to be compatible with any other auto guiding system. So if you want to provide your own guide scope and your own, own guide camera, nah, that's not going to work. So we're entering very clearly into a, a, a walled garden ecosystem, unless we can find a way to hack the electronics or the software that is in there. So I really hope it's ND based. But if like if this telescope was a bit of a more open system, I'd be interested in just the OTA with the integrated autofocuser and the integrated dew ring. That that would be amazing because then I can just like or even even with the Star Sense Auto Guider, if I can just like take this, it's a whole set. I take the OTA, I plop it down on whatever mount I want. Let's say my ZWAM5 or a mount that I'm reviewing right now, the Warp Astron Strain Wave Gear Drive mount. I plop it down on there and I just am able to access the uh, autofocuser via ASCOM or ND. I'm able to access the camera via ASCOM or ND. I'm able to access the StarSense Auto Guider via ASCOM or ND. That would be amazing, but I'm sure that's not going to happen. So I see something that has so much potential and that potential will likely be squandered by sales strategy that will make this into a walled garden ecosystem, as is the want of things these days. But we shall see, and I really hope that Celestron uh, makes me a liar on that so that I'm completely wrong and it's gonna be an amazing step forward for the hobby. But as I see it right now, this is, from a hardware perspective, it looks like an incredible package. Uh, from a price perspective, on at first glance, it's extremely high price, so it's definitely not a, an impulse buy. But for what you get for that price, it's not that bad. Like the the Evolution mount is, I think, one thousand dollars new. The Raza Six has no price per se, but when you think about the Raza Eight, which is two thousand dollars, then maybe you can assume the Raza Six would be around one thousand five hundred. So you're we're already at two thousand five hundred. Add an autofocuser that's typically a few hundred dollars, so maybe we're at two thousand eight hundred. Add the during that's another hundred dollars to two thousand nine hundred. Add the camera that's another few hundred dollars. Let's say we're at three thousand three hundred. And then we're, we're not quite at $4,000, but I see where the price actually comes from. Even though I do think it is overpriced, it prohibits people from buying this as a, a pure impulse buy system. And the only way that I would take the step and buy this telescope would be if I knew I could reuse those components that are individually really great 
in a very free way, exactly as I wish to do so. But I feel it's not going to be the case. What are, what are your new thoughts on this telescope? Have you heard of it uh, before? And yeah, please let me know down in the comments. Also, while you're going there, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support me even more, you could join my Patreon, link in the description or simply join the channel as a member, or use any of my affiliate links below to buy anything you like. There's even an Amazon affiliate link if you click on that and then buy anything you like on Amazon, I'll get a small commission so it helps support the channel. And it's the support of all of you, and in particular my channel members and Patreon supporters that makes this channel possible, so thank you so much. I'll put links, by the way, as well, to pre-order links to this smart telescope. If you have $4,000 like burning in a hole in your pocket, then yeah, buy this telescope, test it out, let me know how it worked out. And of course, if you're from Celestron and you're watching this and you want to provide more details, let us know down in the comments. If we do get a comment from Celestron, I'll be sure to pin it so we can see what Celestron has to say. And if you want me to go ahead and review this telescope, uh, get in touch. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. Although uh, I've never managed to get in contact with Celestron to, uh, to actually uh, review some of their stuff. So yeah, fingers crossed it could happen. I would love to actually test this out because I feel that as a setup, it has a huge amount of potential, especially if it's not going to be closed garden, but I'm sure it's gonna be. Well, we shall see. And even as I'm filming this video, I find myself actually looking back on my browser, looking at the picture and kind of salivating because it does look like a beautiful optical tube. Uh, it, it looks very well designed with like the dew shield in front, the dew ring, the camera sensor, the filter drawer, the autofocuser, the ability to add the auto guider. Then we'll be able to use it in equatorial mode. And if Celestron releases a good camera with cooling properties, that could be a really awesome all-in-one setup, very similar to the uh, Mead, LS 600 types of mounts as well. So I'll be, I'll definitely be watching this closely uh, to see what it becomes in the future. So thank you so much for watching. Again, let us know your thoughts in the comment. Are you gonna buy this? Again, let us know as well. And uh, with that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.